Good afternoon, Poké Sports, and welcome to another VGC Battle Stadium video back with our rental teams again. Now, we took a big little chunk of, uh, of time to do our Patreon teams, and, you know, we did actually get a lot of Patreons requesting teams to be built. I think a total of seven this month. So we did take a little bit, a little big block of the month to just focus on those Patreon teams. So here we are back again with rental codes and rental teams found on the Poké Sports Discord. If you guys are not a part of the Poké Sports Discord, link is down below in the description. You guys can go into the rental codes chat, leave me rental codes, and it's actually been pretty slow lately, probably because I haven't advertised in a while. Understandable, but it's been pretty slow. So you guys have a very high chance of, you know. Putting a team in there, taking a screenshot of a rental code, and having me notice it, and just to appear on the channel here. I do plan on doing a lot more of these, because uh, Patreon teams kind of happen in the middle of the month, because I do still need time to build them, and, you know, practice with them, and, st and stuff like that, before they actually appear here on the channel. But, yeah, enough advertising that. Anyway, here we are with Galarian Weezing. Now, Aaron Cybertron Zeng made a Galarian Weezing team. I've been practicing with the Galarian Weezing team with uh, Brian, one of our competitor tier Patreons. Um... And it's actually a very interesting Pokemon, and I do think that neutralizing gas is just strong ability, and it's strong enough to make this Pokemon super viable. So I can kind of see what um, Dakota, who is in the Patreon chat, also known as what Store Brand Velocim in the in the in the Discord group, very very interesting strategy he has here. The Noivern is actually a very good pair with the. With the Weezing, and uh, rental code to this will be at the end of the video, by the way. The the Noivern is a very good pair with Weezing because Weezing will nullify all abilities, which makes Noivern the fastest Tailwind user in the game, aside from, uh, oh, even even including Driftblim, because Driftblim can't proc it as Unburden Boost either with uh, Weezing on the field. So that's kind of the premise of this team. The rest of the team is actually full of some fun stuff, so I'm actually super excited. Let's go ahead, get into the battle, and see what is gonna go. Okay, we haven't seen Delmize in quite a while. Actually, a little bit interested to see it, and this is actually a really good opportunity to get that Prankster Tailwind up like we wanted to. His team actually does have a lot of Trick Room Mons. That's fine. We'll just ignore those for now. I think um, Weezing Noivern can actually be really strong in this scenario. A lot of Grass types on his team doesn't appreciate, you know, flying type Pokemon. The Mammoth Swan, I think, is a nice bring for us here as well. And I gotta check if this Chandelure has Energy Ball. I'm not 100% sure. I don't believe it does. Now just Heat Wave, Imprison Trick Room, etc. Um, we might need a Rotom here. That's a that's a weird thought. Actually, no. Let's leave the Rotom behind. Let's bring the Rillaboom. How are we gonna get rid of the Chandelure? We have our Mammoth Swine for that. Okay. I think this will be fine. As long as we get the Tailwind up and we're able to outspeed this first turn, we can get some serious damage off on this Whimsicott. And as long as we're able to match the Tailwind too, that's really what's important. Because the rest of the team that a Wan has is super slow. What is the lead? Beast Ball. Okay. It is... It is interesting. I didn't quite expect this. We do get rid of Rock Wrecker. Not Rock Wrecker. Uh, Solid Rock, which is nice. Um, I can't take the opportunity to go for the taunt onto, well, I guess it won't really matter, right? Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll, we'll Tailwind and Taunt, because Tailwind is going to go off first. Going to Dynamax the Rhyperior. So I might be saying Sayonara to my... To either one, actually. Could I... Oh, oh, no. Beast Ball is going to be big old boy. Never mind. Okay, so this taunt is uh, a little bit useless. I was hoping to taunt the Tailwind. But uh, I guess it won't matter. Interesting. Okay. I guess I can kind of hope that he KOs one of my Pokemon here. Yeah, that's, this taunt is going to be meaningless. Goes for some air streams. Okay. Into Noivern, gonna knock us down to our Sash. Um, in all reality, I don't think that we will be able to KO this Braviary. It does just go for EQ. So Weezing's gonna go down here. Okay. Rough first turn. But we can come back from this. 
That's a choice banded Rhyperior. Oh, jeez. Okay, we need to bring Mammoth Swine 100%. This man, this thing needs to ice school crash. Actually, I think I'm gonna Dynamax with Max Hailstorm. Like, I, this, this Braviary needs to go down. It's like so important here. So let's do that right now, right here. 100%, 120%. I'll go for Air Slash flinches on this Rhyperior because there's really no better option. We just have to hope for the best. We should still be out speeding because we are in Tailwind and they only have a plus one speed. And even if they undynamax somehow, magically, they are taunted as well. Which means they can't max guard, so that taunt actually might be pretty meaningful. Since they can't max guard, they're just going to take a max hailstorm to the face regardless. We missed the air. Okay, everything that can go bad is happening so far. Alright, I understand. This is Pokemon. Beautiful. Nice, 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 nice. Good KO. Uh... I really would have liked for that to hit. Just that 30% chance to flinch is always so nice. And since he didn't Dynamax, we actually might have gotten the flinch too. Oh well. So sad. Too bad. Let's free Q again. Oh yeah, he's banded. So he's gonna just sit there and keep going free Q. I actually killed off my own Noivern, but I'm okay by doing that. I am actually content with that. Because my Rillaboom is still in the back. I do have the option of faking out whatever I'd like to. Technically speaking, this right here doesn't threaten my Rillaboom because I can take 20 EQs. Oh, I wish I had Grassy Surge on this Rillaboom, but that doesn't exist. Oh, Sparkly Boy. Nice, Dakota. Well, can't fake you out. But I can just go for the Quake. Okay, hear me out. I'm gonna double into this Shandy. Okay, switches out, that's fine. Probably predicting the fake out. So it's actually good that I didn't fake out. But I just want to double in here. Simply because breaking sashes is important. Nice. Lowering speed, not that it matters. And then Quaking, okay, we have all, we have, we have the, the framework, we have the plan to win this game. This next turn should be super simple. We're all speeding both these Pokemon. We just max Hailstorm and then go for Wood Hammer, and that should be more than enough to KO. Man, that's why I'm putting in some serious work, folks. Honestly. I do think that Dakota said the reason that he decided to bring the Mamoswine over the Darmanitan is simply because he wants the Dynamax to be the Mamoswine. And Darmanitan Dynamax is just kind of bad. Uh, but yeah, super simple turn. Hailstorm you. Woodhammer you. Oh, this, uh, this actually feels really nice. This, uh, I think one was pretty high rated. It's like 1,500. This team is putting in some work. Granted, uh, Mammoth Swine's putting in all the work here, actually. Let's see if this Wood Hammer can KO. I'm pretty sure it will. Beautiful. Choice Banded Rhyperior, though? That's crazy. That's a, that's a wicked strat. And then Hailstorm. This also should be enough. Sayonara. Dakota, you got a team here. I'm actually super excited to see how the next one's gonna go. I'm, a, I'm actually incredibly impressed with Mammoth Swine right now. Leave a like down below and subscribe if you guys are impressed with Mammoth Swine. Another funky team. Okay, we have a Dusk Noir. We have a Drampa. All right. Um, this is so weird. It's such a Trick Room team, but there's like just Dusk Noir as a setter? Interesting. Um, Chandelure, hello. We should imprison Trick Room first turn. Followed by Fake Out? I think, yeah, I think Fake Out's our best option. Just Fake Out whatever the adjacent is. Actually, yeah, he could just... Dynamax. And completely nullify that. Well, 
What are, what are other options? I I do think that Rillaboom is necessary. I think Mamoswine is necessary. I'm not 100% on uh, Noivern. I'll bring Rotom. On the off chance, he decides to bring that um, Cinderace is the lead. And then bring Rillaboom, Mamoswine in the back. Bringing Rillaboom, Mamoswine in the back worked really well for us in the last battle. So let's just do it again. I really don't think we have to get a Tailwind up here. That's why I left the Noivern behind. We don't really need it. It's not necessary. Uh, the, the whole team seems like a Trick Room team minus that Cinderace. Just kind of uh, looks like it doesn't belong there. Ferrothorn and Dusk Noir. We are put in a pretty interesting position. Does see my air balloon, does see my citrus. Okay. I think we just imprison first turn. And let's burn this this Ferrothorn. If we get the opportunity to, let's use it. Burning Ferrothorn will make it so that we live the power whip. We just need this uh, Willow not to miss. Because I really would not like to see a Rotom go down this early. Not that Rotom is like super necessary this battle, but mm, it'd be very, very sucky to be at a deficit that early on. Goes for the Protect. And since Ferrothorn just outsped, I think a Trick Room is happening 120%. Since we imprisoned, we are very well off here. Just goes for Rock Slide. Oh no. Pops my air balloon. I'm in a heat wave. I think I want to Dynamax Rotom. Into a Max Geyser onto Dust Noir. Let's do it. Let's do it. We don't have any other options. Gonna switch out of the Ferrothorn. Ugh. Goes into Cinderace. Okay, so that's fine. Also, wait, is my Rotom gonna outspeed? I hope my Rotom doesn't outspeed my. It shouldn't, right? Chandelure, what's your base speed? Oh no, I have no idea what his EVs are. That's not even my fault. That's not my fault, I swear. Well, he still can't trick him unless he takes out my Chandelure, so. Goes for Shadow Sneak. Eep! That is big damage. Okay, thank God. Okay, Chandelure outspeeds. Get very good damage off on Dust Noir. Will I be able to KO here? Yes! Oh! Ooh, close. Very, very close. Let's heat wave again. Actually, let's just Shadow Ball. Why are we heat waving? And we'll go for Max Geyser on Cinderace. The reason I'm doing this is because he has to Shadow Sneak with Dust Noir. He withdraws Cinderace. Goes in with uh, Ferrothorn again? Probably, yep. Goes in with Ferrothorn again. I'll worry about Ferrothorn later. Yeah, he has to Shadow Sneak again. I could always attack it the next turn because Trick Room is always going to give him a negative priority. So I can always attack that slot with any Pokemon that I want. Doesn't actually matter. So Max Geyser is going to be doing some pretty good damage in the rain, I think. That's that's decent. That's almost half. Gonna get some lefties recovery back. Um, what do we want to do? We'll go in with Mammo. I can EQ, which is neutral damage on Ferrothorn. I'm life orbed, so that's nice too. Yeah, let's EQ. Cause I'm levitate. I can't get hit. And I think just another geyser on Ferrothorn, dude. Let's keep whacking at this Ferrothorn for as long as we possibly can. Is Ferrothorn Dynamax? Oh, Ferrothorn's 100% Dynamaxing here. That's a heavy ball right there for that steel Ferrothorn. Interesting. He's going to try to just KO my Rotom. Honestly, dude, he might take this simply because I let my uh, Shandy go down very early. That's where ally switches? That doesn't actually make a difference. 
Because EQ is going to knock him out anyway. Yeah, EQ goes first. It knocks out the Dust Noir. And I still hit Ferrothorn with the Geyser. <laughs> that EQ actually did more damage than I thought it would. I think if Rotom's smart, it takes the opportunity to KO... Yeah, it totally takes the opportunity to KO the Mammoth one. We'll see what it decides to KO here. It's to KOing one of us. No, it goes for Rotom. I do still go down here, though. No, we live at 30! I didn't expect that. Yeah, I think it would have been smarter for him to just go for Mammo there. And then worry about my Rotom after I'm little. Because now I, I'm still around. I can still do one more attack on this Ferrothorn. Because Ferrothorn's slow and there's no Trick Room up. Granted, at the same time... He has a Cinderace. Which can go for high jump kick, can do very annoying shenanigans. I do think EQ is still fine here. It go, does go into Cinderace. Cinderace has no priority except Sucker Punch. Which it could very well go for. Sucker Punch might be enough for this uh, Rotom. You know what, let's, why don't we just predict that, right? We'll go for burn on Pharaoh. Predicting that. Predicting the sucker punch. Could also go for high jump kick just because it outspeeds everything. But it's not living in EQ from this Mammoth one. Oh, but this could be very problematic. Maybe I should have doubled into that Cinderace. Just to guarantee it goes out this turn. I am happy we're in the rain though. There's nothing Ferrothorn can do to change that. Goes for the kick. Oh, on Memo. Oh, this became problematic. Okay, I do get the burn off. This became problematic, though. This overgrowth is still going to knock me out. Can we take this? I think it's worth a shot, right? At least Ferrothorn just got burnt. Um, Rillaboom, you need to prove something to me. So we're able to like negate that lefties, but this grassy terrain is a little bit annoying. We can go for high horsepower. Oh, he still has one whole Pokemon left in the back. Jeez, dude. This is going to be a rough one. Us losing that Chandelure and us just kind of giving... Oh, I should have just gone for the double in. He protects. Smart play. Oh, I so regret not just doubling into that Cinderace when I had the chance. I knew that Cinderace was going to be a problem. How well can we take this? Not that well. To be honest, I was hoping that would be a little bit better. Cinderace is going to raise his defense. Rain's gonna stop, so now we're super weak to fire. GG. Yeah, we're, we're done. Uh, rest in peace. Ah. <laughs> That's okay, we took home one win. Oh, this is super rest in peace. Unless he misses the Pyro Ball. And we somehow still KO. Actually, we might still KO. I know Cinderace can miss the Power Ball, so let's try it. We'll put our faith in the RNG gods. Nope, doesn't miss it. Rest in peace, Sayonara, Rillaboom. Oh, uh, okay. We could have played that better. I think we really messed that game up by one, letting our Chandelier going down, let, letting our Chandelier go down, and then not doubling in that turn when we had the opportunity to just get rid of the Cinderace. Then we would have been in a lot better position. Actually, we could have also protected with the Mammoth Swine to predict the high jump kick too. But I really thought he wanted to KO the Rotom. But anyway, GG's. If you guys want the rental code to this team, here it is. I hope you guys did enjoy it. And remember, if you guys want me to play a rental team that you have made, go in our Discord and leave it in the rental codes chat in the Discord. I'm Kevin. This is Poke Sports. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we're really close to 1,000 subscribers. And if you made it this far, you probably like us. Have a great night. Peace out.